Good evening. A County Durham man who drove to Poland to pick up 11 Ukrainian refugees his family were preparing to house says he was forced to leave them behind because of delays processing their visa applications. Paul Aitchison says he was left angry and frustrated after spending two weeks in the country trying to help the extended family he was sponsoring complete the paperwork. Stuart Winkup reports. They were forced to flee their homes leave fathers and husbands. They made it to a shelter in Poland and thought they were coming to the northeast, but that journey has been delayed. This particular situation, it breaks them, and you can see that. Over the last two weeks, from first meeting the family we were going to bring back, there was a glimmer of hope, and you've seen it in their faces. They thought, OK, we're safe now. And as this couple of weeks has gone on, that slowly diminished. Paul spent two weeks in Poland trying to sort out the family's visa applications, but this morning he returned home without them. We were told initially it would be the 72 hours, it wasn't 72 hours, here we are two weeks on and we, we still haven't got visas. The, the UK government aren't doing enough for the people of Ukraine. The government though says it's processing 1,000 visa applications a day and is doing all it can to help, but the family's local MP disagrees. The Homes for Ukraine scheme, sponsorship scheme, is an utter shambles. And this family have gone above and beyond to help, to help a family in need, and yet there's barriers in the way the whole time. Bags of sweets are here for when they arrive. The farmhouse on the outskirts of Durham is being prepared for when the family finally arrive, and Paul has now paired 70 Ukrainians with families here in the UK. The government says it's working as quickly as possible to help those fleeing Ukraine find safety here in the UK. It says it streamlined the process, simplified the forms and increased the number of caseworkers. And in the last three weeks, it's issued 25,000 visas. Before leaving Poland, Paul managed to move the family from a warehouse to a hotel in the Netherlands, where they still wait for their visas to be processed. Stuart Winkup, BBC Look North. A man's appeared before Newcastle Crown Court charged with rape after a woman in her 60s was attacked at a popular beauty spot. The victim was found in a distressed state in the Rising Sun Country Park near Wall's End on Monday afternoon. Northumbria police say 34-year-old Alan Anthony Rothwell from Newcastle's also been charged with another sexual offence as well as robbery and kidnap. Campaigners have gathered in Newcastle to protest over the cost of living crisis and the sacking of 800 p and workers. The rally at Gray's Monument in the city centre was organised by the People's Assembly. Demonstrators are angry about the lack of action from the government to support those suffering hardships due to fuel and food price rises. Transpennine Express services will be significantly reduced tomorrow because of industrial action. Members of the RMT union are going on strike in a long-running dispute over pay levels for conductors. Customers in our region are being advised not to travel on the majority of routes and to plan carefully if their journey is necessary. Football now and some of our teams have been in action this afternoon. In the championship, Middlesbrough boosted their playoff hopes with an emphatic 4-0 win away at Peterborough United. In League One, it was a huge last-minute winner for Sunderland, beating Gillingham 1-0. And in League Two, Harrogate Town lost 2-1 to Colchester United. Hartlepool United lost 2-0 to Salford City. And it was a two-all draw for Carlisle United away to Tranmere Rovers. It's time now for a look at the weather. Here's Emmanuel Loney with the forecast. Hello there. We've seen a little bit of everything in our weather today. It's going to continue to remain dry as we head into tonight. We might just see things turning a little bit cloudy, particularly along the coast, which in turn could lead to a few, to a few wintry showers. But it will be chilly, minus two degrees Celsius, our nighttime lows. I think first thing tomorrow, things should brighten up. But as we head into the afternoon, you can just about see those cloudy conditions moving in with some rain as well. But as you can tell, it will be feeling milder with highs of around 11 degrees Celsius. Well, that's about it from us this evening. I'll be back with Look North tomorrow at 20 past five. Do join me if you can. But for now, have yourselves a very good night. Bye bye. <laughs>